What's up YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another market update. And this video is going to focus solely on big boy items, big boy toys. Lots of really expensive stuff has sold here on eBay. And these were all just in my watch list. I'm sure if I searched closed listings on eBay, I'd find even more. But I picked out a pretty good assortment here of everything from Revenge of the Jedi proof cards, like you see in the thumbnail for this video, to some early uh, early stuff that sold and a couple of mint and sealed box items, kind of all over the map. But the vast majority, if not all of these, I would call big boy toys that sold for a lot of money. And we're going to start off with a few... Uh, early stuff. Uh, the first one is a 21 back Walrus Man, unpunched, and it was super clean. This one was uh, in an auction, and I thought this price was really, really good. I didn't look too closely at the photos, but I had it on my watch list because it did look like a pretty clean example at first blush. It was a nice unpunched example, no price sticker on this one, and assuming it's legit, it looks legit, okay, but it, it looks legit, so I don't, I'm not sure for a fact, but uh, $549.99 in an auction, 25 bids on that one, $34 shipping. I think what held this down a little bit is because it came from Japan. And no offense to my Japanese viewers, but every single time I've ever bought something from Japan, they ship it in like a very custom e-packet type of thing. I think they call it an e-packet that has no protection. And almost every single time I've ordered something from them, uh, from somebody in Japan, it never gets delivered in the same condition as it was in the auction. I'm sure that you could work it out with the seller and say, hey, look, I'll, I'll make, I'll pay you extra. Just please protect the thing. Uh, but I've, I've had very limited success from Japan other than with prototypes or, you know, loose prototypes, Power of the Force 2, things like that. I've had good success there, but Mint on Cards, I've just not had any luck dating back to even when I was buying the Takara Mint on Card G.I. Joes. But $549.99 took that home. I would wager if this was an auction in the U.S., it would have sold for quite a bit more, but that was pretty nice. Next up was an AFA 85 12 back B from Brian's Toys. What a stunner. This one was a punched example with no price sticker, but 85 90 85 were the sub scores on this one. What an absolute gem. Uh, this one looks like it came straight off of the Toys R Us ta uh, pegs. It's just a, an immaculate example. And this one has the white haired Ben Kenobi inside. This one sold for $2,169, which I thought was a great price. I would wager that a year or two ago, you could probably add five to $600 pretty easily to that number. So I think in the current environment, to get an AFA 85, 12 back B, sub $2,200, I think that's actually a good price. Uh, next up, I'm going to come back to this seller in a second because he had some epic Revenge of the Jedi proof cards that all sold at auction. But uh, we're going to show this 12-inch AFA-80 Luke Skywalker mint and seal box. 75, 85, 85 were the subscores on this one. That one sold for $10.26.99, which I thought was a pretty good price given uh, what it is. I mean, you know, it's a pretty clean example. It did have a pretty major crease there in the upper left-hand corner. A couple of creases on uh, the side of the window there, but man, what an awesome looking example of the 12 inch line Luke Skywalker for $10.26.99. I thought that was a pretty good price. Uh, next up, a couple of Boba Fett's in this auction lot. I don't think they're right next to each other, but I had to show you this one. This is that AFA 75 free survival kit 41 back A. Obviously the Boba Fett himself had some pretty heavy degradation going on with the plastic as we've covered at length in the video in, in different market updates. 85, 75, 75 were the sub scores for an overall 75. It did have a price sticker and it was a punched example. That one sold in an auction down in Australia for 4,251 Australian dollars, which equates to about 2,750 US dollars. So pretty cool example there. Is it just me or does it look like there's a little bit of fading going on on the card back? Uh, it does to me, but it got an 85 score for the card, so what do I know? Um, it, it just looks a little bit sun faded to me. Uh, next up, we had an Imperial Stormtrooper in the Hoth Battle Gear. This was the 32 back. I believe this is not the deb debut card. The debut is the 31A, if memory serves, but don't quote me on that. Pretty clean example, though. This one looks like it would grade very high, probably an 80 grade at a minimum. Uh, crystal clear blister there, and it was a punched example with no price ticker. That one sold also down in Australia for 910 Australian dollars, which is 588 US dollars and change. Uh, here is that mint and sealed box playset that I mentioned at the at the beginning of the video. This is the Ewok Village playset, and this was an AFA 80, uh, and you can see there that's graded 80. 
Um, you know, is it an 80? I don't know. I think you could argue that it might be a little bit overgraded giving the creasing on the top there of the box, but uh, still, it's it's a mint and seal box, Ewok playset in very high grade. It sold for $1,294 US dollars and change plus $10 shipping. I guarantee you that it costs Brian Toys a lot more than $10 to ship this item, but $1,300 for uh, an Ewok Village AFA 80. I think that's a bargain of a deal there, really. Uh, next up, this is one I did have. I've talked about this in the past. My Patreon supporters get buy it now alerts if I find something where I'm in between making my what to buy videos. If I find something on eBay that I think is a good deal, I send it off to them. And uh, I send it you know, just to my Patreon supporters. And this is one I did send. It was a beautiful, unpunched Stormtrooper on the 41 back. This is the 41 back... Uh, 41 back D, AFA 80, 80, 85, 80 were the sub scores. You can see a little bit of uh, discoloration on the limbs there, but wow, what an awesome example. And it was listed for 650 free shipping, which to me seems like an absolute bargain. And I sent it out. I don't know if my Patreon supporters bought it or not, but I, I can tell you that it sold very quickly after I sent that out. And it was a beautiful example, uh, unpunched and just absolutely stunning to me. I would have paid a lot more than that for this particular stormtrooper. So 650 I thought was a bargain of a price on that. Uh, let's dig into those awesome proof cards. I've got, I think, nine of them all together that LJ's card shop had at auction. And fair, full disclosure, I bought my Bosk Revenge of the Jedi proof card from this seller. Uh, first off is the Imperial Commander graded AFA 80. That one sold for 1237 I thought that was a pretty good deal. You can see a soft crease there uh, on the upper left-hand side of the card back. But uh, beautiful Revenge of the Jedi uh, Imperial Commander there. So as you guys probably know by now, uh, the movie was originally going to be titled Revenge of the Jedi. Once uh, George Lucas changed it to Return of the Jedi, these card backs were no longer viewed as uh, as part of the retail line, so to speak. So, But some of them did, did uh, survive, survive all these years, and they are now graded. So this... Revenge of the Jedi proof card did sell for eight uh, for twelve thirty seven. It was an AFA eighty. Next up is Leia Organa. Any of the main heroes on these Revenge of the Jedi proofs, uh, they tend to command big money. But I actually thought this was a good deal fourteen seventy five for Leia in her Bespin gown. Uh, I've got the first twelve Princess Leia coming up. It did not sell for fourteen seventy five. I can tell you that. But this eighty plus grade. Princess Leia Bespin did sell for fourteen seventy five. Han Solo in his Hoth battle gear. This one was an AFA eighty five as well. Fifteen twenty six was the winning bid on this. And keep that in mind that you know with future Hakes auctions and things like that, it does seem like these Revenge of the Jedi proof cards have come back down to reality with regard to price. For a while there, they were all going for over two thousand, three thousand dollars, and some of them still do, as you'll see in a second. But uh, for some of these kind of secondary characters or uh, the main characters where they're in their alternate outfits like this Han Hoth. Don't overpay for them because uh, there are some good deals out there. 1526 took that home for an AFA 85. I thought that was a bargain. Uh, next up, Han Solo Bestman. This was also an AFA 85. That one sold for 1677. It's a little bit more of an iconic pose. Uh, on the card back. So I, I can understand why this one sold for a little bit more versus this one where it's more of an action shot. It's a little blurry. Um, I, to me, of the two, I, I'd be willing to pay up for that one as well. It's just a more iconic photo. Uh, next up, Luke Bespin. I thought this was actually a pretty decent deal. $2,500 took, took this one home. It was an AFA 85. And you know, to me, this is one of the more iconic card back images. And to get that AFA 85 for $2,500 when probably a year ago this was more like $3,500, uh, maybe $3,000, somewhere in that ballpark. $2,500 is a good price there. Uh, Luke X-Wing, uh, obviously that one went for a little bit more just given that it's an earlier character on this Revenge of the Jedi proof card. $2,900 took that home. That one was also an AFA 85. Uh, now we're digging into some other bigger items. Jawa AFA 85. That one sold for $24.49. Uh, that's a, that's a beautiful item. I mean, to me, I, you know, $2,500 which is about what these two both went for. I take the Luke Bespin personally, but let me know in the comments below if you had your choice of two AFA 85 Revenge of the Jedi proof cards, would you take the Luke Bespin or would you take the Jawa? To me, me personally, I'd take the Luke Bespin. Uh, I just think it's a much more iconic image and that blue really pops in the background uh, next to the, the free Nia Num sticker there. So um, 
That's not to say this is not a nice item. Okay, this is a beautiful item, and it's a first 12 figure, so you can expect that one to go for a lot of money. Uh, Princess Leia, first 12. I knew this one was going to go for a lot of money. Someone asked me what I thought it would go for, and I said it was going to go for at least $3,000, if not $3,500, and it did come in right between those two numbers. Thirty-one fifty for an AFA 85. Yes, please. I'd pay that all day long if I had that kind of money. Uh, that, that, that is a stunner there, and <clears throat> to me, worth every penny. <clears throat> Next up is the last one. This one was incredible. This one was a blank name uh, name pill for R2-D2 on the Revenge of the Jedi proof card. Blank name, AFA-80. Wow, how cool is that? This is the first time I've ever seen one of these come up for sale. And, uh, I, you know, it must have been kind of an earlier iteration of the proof card before they even got the uh, the text and the colors ready for the name pill on this one. But how cool is that to see a blank name pill on uh, a first 12 character, you knew it was going to go for a lot of money. 3750 took that home on 34 bids. So lots of action on that one, but that was a pretty incredible item. Uh, back to some mint on cars before we wrap things up. Here was a droids mint on card Boba Fett. It was not graded. It was just in a sliding acrylic case. It sold for 8100 Australian dollars, which is 5238 but the buyer apparently did not pay because this is back on eBay right now. Uh, but that one did sell in an auction originally for 5238 US dollars, uh, 32 bids on that one. But again, the, it was a non-paying buyer, so that one is, at least as of the making of this video, that one is back up on eBay right now. Uh, next up, the same seller also had an AFA 80 C-3PO. And surprisingly, this one sold for 663 US dollars, 1025 Australian dollars. Uh, I, I was a little surprised that it sold for that low because right around the same time, an ungraded example, admittedly the Canadian card back, uh, sold for 836. So, uh, anyway, just, I'm sorry, this one is Canadian as well. So I take that back. I didn't realize this one was the Kenner Canada as well. When I pulled it up originally, I thought it was the US version, but it was the Kenner Canada AFA 80, 80, 85, 85. That one sold for 663. But then an ungraded one with an even darker blister sold in an auction for $836. So again, maybe it's because this one was down in Australia, whereas this one was in the U.S., so you had a little bit r less risk with shipping. But given that one of them was graded and one of them was not, uh, it just seems like a pretty massive discount to get that one for $663, even you know, rolling the dice that it's going to make it there safely from Australia. Uh, versus one that's ungraded that sold for you know 150 to 200 dollars higher. So who knows what's going on in this market? It's really hard to predict. But I hope you like looking at some of these really epic items, especially those proof cards. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll be back soon.